Hello, welcome to lesson 34, Exception Handling, brought to you by Ankpro Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn what Exception Handling mechanism is. To understand it very clearly, to understand the Exception Handling very clearly, we should be aware of the types of errors which we daily see in the programming world. In the programming language, whenever we write a piece of code, then we compile and execute. In this situation, we may have a chance to get the three types of errors as mentioned below. The three types of errors includes the syntactical error, compile time error and the runtime error. Syntactical error in the sense the missing of double quotes or the line terminator or the wrong spelling to the syntax. Okay, this is what the syntactical error is. And coming to the compile time error, it includes the same thing like syntactical error that double quotes missing and the line de line terminator ending or assigning a wrong data to a variable. This is what about the compile time error. Keep in mind syntactical error and compile time error are not going to cause a major issue to your program. Okay. Coming back to runtime error. Here runtime error the scenario is something like this. When we are trying to create an object to an abstract class. Okay. And you are, you are running that piece of code or executing that piece of code uh, for sure it is going to cause you a runtime error because it's not able to create we are not able to create uh, it's, not, it's not possible to create uh, an object of an abstract class okay but uh, when we override it and we do it uh, it causes a runtime error that's what about runtime error runtime error is going to cause a major issue to your program okay now we understood the types of errors right now what we'll do is we'll jump into exception handling mechanism Okay, what is exception handling mechanism? Runtime error is nothing but an exception, means it is an error. Okay, so if a program is having exception, what we have to do? We need to handle the exception, in the sense, we need to handle the error. And to do that, we need a beautiful mechanism called exception handling mechanism. Exception handling mechanism is the mechanism which is going to handle the exception or the errors which occur in our program. Okay, following are the exception handling mechanisms. You can, you can observe here there are two exception handling mechanisms we see here one is logical implementation and one is try catch implementation as of now we'll deal with the logical implementation and we'll explore it to understand it very clearly what i'll do is i'll just try i'll write a piece of code i'm going to create three variables initialize three variables okay sorry once I'm done with this, what, I, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to take input from the user. So I have to specify him. Okay. Value of, enter the value of A. Okay, how do we enter? You'll take a variable int dot parse method why I'm using parse method to convert the user input to a integer type because console dot write line returns me in the string format okay once I'm done with this what I'll do is I'll just copy this piece of lines and I'll paste it to just see the time and enter the value of B this is the value for B and I'll rename this variable to B okay once I'm done with this I'm left with the other variable called C okay what I'll do is I'll take C variable and I'll divide A by B. Okay. Division of A by B is C. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll run this piece of code. Okay. It's asking me to enter the value of A. I'll enter like 10. I'll enter the value of P5. Now it is telling that division of A by B is 2 because it divided like 10 by 5. Its output is 2 exactly. But uh, but keep in mind the scenario is like uh, what happens if user enters what happens if user enters the value of A as 10 and but the value of B as 0. And when I press enter, you can uh, you can observe we got an error, we got an exception telling that you are trying to divide a number by zero which is not possible and that is what we call an exception in the sense error. Okay, now how to handle this exception? That's what we learned in the previous slide. To handle the exception, we are having two types, two mechanisms. One is logical implementation and we'll try with the try catch implementation. Now, as of now, we'll understand what logical implementation is. Okay, logical implementation in the sense uh, you're, you're using 
using you are using the logic there that's all for example you are specifying the condition that if b equal to 0 tell the user that uh, that enter number other than 0 okay this is what how do you implement the logical implementation now when i run, run this piece of code uh, if i give like 10 and 5 it works fine but uh, but keep in mind when i run this program and if i give the values like 10 divided by 0 it it's telling that enter number other than 0 this is what the logical implementation is we are playing with the logic here but uh, coming back to presentation here we have other implementation which is very important the try catch implementation this is what the actual exception handling mechanism is so to understand what is try catch implementation we'll just run into the next slide and here you're seeing the syntax for try catch and finally keep in mind try catch finally are the keywords in the exception handling mechanism what is this try catch and finally first of all try block catch block and the finally block try block in the sense this is the block where you're going to pay you're going to place the piece of code which is going to cause an error okay this is the place where you're going to place the piece of code which is going to cause errors okay catch it tells you catch block tells you what type of error you're facing means it will give you a clear description clear description of what type of error you're facing there okay and finally this block is going to execute if if your program is having a error or not irrespective of that this finally block is going to execute okay try block it means that you're going to place a piece of code which is going to cause your exception or error okay if if the try block is handled with the exception if your if your code is having an exception or having an error that will be caught in the catch block and it tells that here we are creating an exception object and in that object you can filter like things like uh, you can see what type of error it is in the catch block okay to understand it very clearly what we'll do is we'll jump back into the uh, visual studio and explore it now what i'll do is i'll implement try catch okay what i'm doing i'm i know this piece of code is going to cause me a problem so what i'll do is i'll take this entire code and i'll place it in the try block and in the exception in the exception i'll write a piece of code i'll write a piece of code like telling that error occurred okay then we'll use finally okay now what i'll do is in this try block as i said in the syntax try block is the block where we are going to place the piece of code which is going to cause you a error which is going to give you a error or an exception okay i know that when i enter the value of b as zero it is going to give me an error so i place that piece of code here okay and in the cache block what i'm doing is if any exception is faced here or any error, error occurred here that will be cached in this cache block and what I'm doing is if any error is occurring tell to the user that error occurred and finally irrespective of uh, exception is handled in the try block or not uh, this finally piece of code is going to execute now we'll see this control F5 and we enter the value of 10 and B is 5 okay the division of A by B is 2 and the program got executed you can observe here the cache block did not get executed because there was no error in this piece of code what I did now and finally block irrespective of whether the try catch try block is having an exception or not uh, this finally block get executed now what I'll do is I'll run this piece of code again and I'll enter 10 but now now what I'll do is I'll enter the value of B as 0 and you can observe it is telling that a hey, you entered me the wrong value which uh, i can't do it it is telling that a divided by b that is 10 divided by 0 which is not possible so this try block did not get executed it jumped into catch block telling the user that error occurred but you can observe the finally block also got executed it means that irrespective of your program is having an error or exception finally block is going to execute for sure 
this is about the finally block now we'll jump back this is about the try catch and finally this is uh, this is what the actual exception handling mechanism is okay now we'll jump back into presentation you can observe generic and specific catch block what do you mean by that catch block without exception class catch block without exception class is called as generic catch block what do you mean by generic catch block in the previous in this program this catch block is called as generic catch block because for example for example when I run this program okay I'll enter the value of 10 but here I'll enter the value of B instead of entering number what I'll do I'll enter the value as 2 in the string format but it is telling that error occurred and the program executed it means that it should tell us that if I if, if I entered like 10 by 0 it should tell that divide by 0 exception now for the value B I entered like string format it should tell that exception as format string string format is not correct the form input format is not correct it should tell like that but uh, it is telling me every time error occurred error occurred but this is not the correct way so in the dotnet framework or we have a class called exception class okay what it tells you is when you use that exception class it tells you exactly what type of uh, exception you are facing there so so catch catch block with the exception class is called a specific catch block it means it tell you exactly what exception you're facing so to understand it very clearly what I'll do is I'll use the exception class and I'll use the ex I'm creating the object of it then ex dot I'm using a message property there what it tells you is now you can observe here now when I run this program I'll enter the value of 10 then I'll enter the value of uh, BS2 yes it executed but now you will see the magic of this exception class what it is going to do now I'll enter the value of BS10 and the value of BS0 now previously what we saw when we did that it gave me a error as error occurred the message as error occurred but uh, when I press enter you can observe it gave me a message as attempted to divide by 0 where this is defined attempted to divide by 0 it is defined in the exception class here you can observe we did not write a piece of code telling that attempted to divi divide by 0 but uh, we are we are creating an object of exception and we are using a property called message this is the message we saw in the console window and who is giving that message it is given by the exception class okay this type this type of catch block with the exception class we call it as a specific catch block now what I'll do is I'll jump back into presentation you can have multiple catch blocks in your program now what I'll do is I'll just copy this okay to this program only what we'll do we'll run this program again but uh, instead of entering the numeric value I'll enter the string format okay see here you can observe the input string was not in the correct format who gave this message we are not hard coding any text here but uh, that is handled by the exception class and giving us the message using this message property now keep in mind you can have multiple catch blocks in your program so if you know exactly what type of error you're going to face uh, you can specify here like uh, you can specify like divide by zero exception okay and uh, and format exception format exception okay now when I divide when when I enter the value of a as 10 and B as 0 I know this piece of code is going to execute because we are explicitly defining we are, expli we are already knowing that this type of exception is going to uh, come on the console window so we are explicitly defining what type of exception is for example now when I run this program you can observe I'm entering value of 10 and it is 0 it is giving us attempted to divide by 0 exception and who is handling that it is handling by this catch block similarly when I run this control F5 and I'll enter 10 and I'll enter now the string format but our input is going to take only the integer but I'm entering a string but it is telling that it's giving me error it's telling that input string was not in the correct format who is handling that it's handled by this catch block okay you can have multiple catch blocks in your program okay now we'll jump back into presentation okay here are some of the commonly used exceptions we'll generally face in the programming world array type mismatch exceptions 
it means that type of value being stored is com incompatible with the type of array for example if you're creating an integer type array and to that array was trying to store the string type so that time we'll get an array type mismatch exception and divide by zero exception that we as we saw now and index out of range exception for example for an array for when you define an array for that array you're specifying specifying the size as 5 but uh, you are trying to store six values in it at that time we'll get an exception called index out of range exception and invalid cache ex exception and out of memory exception overflow exception and null reference exception you can refer to this all of these exceptions okay this is what about exception handling mechanism thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to anchor training below